Hello students, so we are here once again with a video to study about the magnetic field inside a straight solenoid or simply we can say it a solenoid. But before studying about the magnetic field, let's study about the solenoid only that what is a solenoid and uh, why we are studying this means solenoid hai kya exactly. So let's begin. So here you can see this diagram, right? This diagram actually represent a solenoid. So solenoid means an insulated copper wire that is wound closely in the form of a helix. As we can see here, this is a, an insulated copper wire which is wound over some core material and it forms a helix around that core. So basically solenoid means an insulated copper wire wound closely in the form of a helix. Helix means a spring like structure. So basically solenoid means an insulated copper wire that is wound closely in the form of a helix. This system is called a solenoid. Most of the times we come across the word called long solenoid. So what is long solenoid? Whenever it is written that we have a long solenoid that means the length of the solenoid is very large as compared to its diameter. So long solenoid denotes a solenoid in which the length of the solenoid is very large as compared to the diameter means length of the solenoid is very large as compared to its diameter. Then we call that kind of solenoid as long solenoid. Alright. Now here I am showing you the sectional view of the solenoid. Suppose I have a solenoid uh, with an insulated copper wound over some core material and I cut it into a lateral section right means I cut that solenoid into a section then it looks like this so here I have this kind of solenoid having copper wire wounded over it over a core and current flowing through that wire then I cut this solenoid into a into this kind of half then the section will appear like this okay here you can see that I represent this wire point by red circles and dots represent that current is coming out of the plane of the paper right the point where current leaves the plane of the paper are marked by the points inside the circle while the points where current enters the plane of the paper are marked as the cross inside the circle so basically what i want to explain is dot inside a circle or a point inside a circle represent that current leaves the plane of paper at those points while cross inside the circle represent current enters the plane of paper at those points okay then the magnetic field at these points where current is either entering or leaving the plane of paper is actually similar to that of a straight current carrying wire means at this point this wire wounded over a core act like a 
straight current carrying wire and the magnetic field around these points is in the form of concentric circles similar to that of a straight current carrying wire like in case of a straight current carrying wire to find the magnetic field lines we use right hand thumb rule that we are going to see here only we are again going to use that suppose at this point where current is coming out of the plane of the paper if i want to use uh, um, the right hand rule to find the magnetic field lines then i have to point my right hand thumb in the direction of the current and this this direction in which the fingers curl of of right hand the fingers of my right hand curl gives the direction of the magnetic field lines right so at these points the magnetic field lines is in the form of concentric circles at every point is in the form of concentric circles and the direction is like this so i can plot it as this is the direction means at this point this is the direction so we we get anti clockwise direction at these points this is same for all these points right now come to the the now come to the points where current is entering the plane of paper at those points where current is entering i have to place my right hand like this because the right hand thumb have to point along the direction of the current which is going inside the plane of paper then i get the direction of fingers curl in a clockwise direction so again in this case where current is entering the plane of paper we get concentric circles but this time the direction of these lines is clockwise right the direction of these lines is clockwise as per the right hand thumb rule now if such type of phenomena occurs at every point so we can conclude that this field is like this combinedly they form a uh, effect like this with the direction of anti clockwise here and clockwise at the bottom right so this is the magnetic field at the points where current is either entering or leaving the plane of paper now come to the remaining area so for the remaining area there are two sections one is this interior section and one is the exterior section so for exterior section or some outside points like q uh, the magnetic field of the points that are marked in cross while the magnetic field uh, because of the points that are marked in dots tends to cancel out each other all right so the field at the exterior points q is quite weak and is along the axis of the solenoid with no perpendicular component while when we talk about the interior midpoint capital p like here if we talk about the interior points so in the interior section the magnetic field is uniform and is strong as compared to the field at the exterior points now one more thing we should know is ampere's right hand rule to define the magnetic field lines completely we should know the um, uh, clock rule or ampere's right hand rule how it works so i am talking about clock rule or ampere's right hand rule now this works like this suppose suppose i have a solenoid like this and i want to find which which face of the solenoid is the north pole and which one is the south pole so i will hold or grasp this solenoid with my right hand such that the fingers of my right hand point along the direction of the current right then in that case the extended thumb will indicate the face of the solenoid that has north polarity now let me clear it 
suppose this is a solenoid then i have two ways to grasp it from my right hand either i can grasp it like this or i can grasp it like this okay but which position i want to choose is that in which my fingers of right hand represent the direction of current so i want to grasp the solenoid with my right hand such that my fingers point along the direction of the current so in this particular case it will be like this if i will grasp the solenoid from my right hand like this then my fingers will point in the direction of the current then at that time the direction extended towards my thumb the direction that is pointed by my thumb gives the direction of the face that is north pole that means for this particular solenoid this is the face that is north pole and this is the face that is south pole this we get from the clock rule or ampere's right hand rule let me write it for you what i did when we grasp the solenoid with right hand so that the fingers point along the direction of the current fingers point along the direction of the current then the extended thumb will then indicate the face of the solenoid that has north polarity all right so we know that the magnetic field lines starts from north and ends towards south so this is north pole and this is south pole so here we have north and this is south so the magnetic field lines we can draw must be like this they comes out from north and ends towards south this is the uh, representation of magnetic field lines across a solenoid so now after this we want to calculate the magnetic field strength inside a long stretch solenoid here we only discuss it that how it comes what is the direction what are the what are the magnetic field lines where are, where is the direction they are pointing now we are going to calculate the magnetic field strength inside a long straight solenoid so here for the calculation of magnetic field inside a solenoid basically i am going to solve it for a long straight solenoid now this is the calculation of magnetic field for a long straight solenoid long straight solenoid means the length of the solenoid will be much greater than its diameter so the magnetic field inside a closely wound long solenoid is uniform everywhere and zero outside as i am showing you in the diagram its magnetic field inside the solenoid is uniform everywhere while at exterior points it is zero but we want to calculate the strength of that magnetic field the value of that magnetic field so this figure is showing the sectional view of a long solenoid now at various turns of the solenoid current comes out of the plane of the paper and that points where current is coming out of the paper we mark that points by dots we circle these dots like the dots inside the circle represent that the current is coming out of the paper while the points where we marked cross inside a circle these points represents that the current enters in the plane of the paper right so current is moving like this we wound the wire and the current is moving like this it comes from this point to this from this point to this means it's leaving from here and entering the plane of paper at these points 
now to find the magnetic field at any inside point like exterior to we already know that exterior points pe magnetic field is zero so we wish to find the magnetic field at interior points so for that we consider a rectangular closed path a b c d as an empyrean loop so i consider a b c d as an empyrean loop so that i can apply ampere circuital law to find the magnetic field at any inside point so let's start if a b c d is an empyrean loop then according to ampere's circuital law according to ampere circuital law closed integral of b dot dl is equal to mu not times of the total current through the loop through the loop a b c d all right now this closed integral of b dot dl is actually the sum of four integrals a to b integral over a to b b dot dl plus integral over b to c b dot dl plus integral over c to d b dot dl and plus integral over d to a b dot dl now these four line integral combinedly form the closed integral over the loop a b c d but for the closed integral c for the closed integral b to c like this one for the closed integral b to c and a to d the angle between b vector and dl vector is 90 degree like b to c this is the direction of the length and this is the magnetic field so this angle is 90 degree for a to d again this is length and this is the direction of magnetic field again 90 degree and when we try to find b dot dl we have to put cos 90 there and cos 90 is equal to 0 so uh, for closed in for this line integral b to c b dot dl theta is 90 degree that means it will be b to c b dl cos 90 and it gives 0 and again for integral d to a b dot dl is equal to d to a b dl cos 90 it will also become 0 so these line integrals will be 0 then the equation this equation from this equation we get this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0 then closed integral b dot dl is equal to integral a to b b dot dl plus integral c to d b dot dl all right so this is the current equation that we have now if we talk about the integral that is happening between c to d so according to the diagram c to d this line integral or this portion is lying outside the solenoid where there exist no magnetic field so for the integral between c to d the value of b is equal to 0 okay so for integral c to d b dot dl we have b is equal to 0 that implies this integral c to d b dot dl is also is equal to 0 as this value b is equal to 0 then again this equation becomes closed integral b dot dl is equal to only a to b b dot dl now let us solve this integral then we get a to b b dl cos 0 if we see here in the diagram a to b then we get the angle 0 degree the direction of length and the direction of magnetic field b and dl are in the same direction so theta is equal to 
zero degree. So we get B dot DL is equal to B DL cos zero, and it implies closed integral of B dot DL is equal to a to b b dl is equal to b a to b dl and a to b dl means if the length of the amperian loop is l if the length of the amperian loop is l then this becomes b l where l is equal to length of side a b of loop a b c d right now this i have considered for a single number of turn if the solenoid that we are considering has n number of turns per unit length what we are considering if there are n number of turns per unit length of the solenoid then in that case this uh, then the number of turns in length l of the solenoid then the number of turns in length l is equal to ho jayega n l so if uh, we consider that there are n number of turns in unit length and in the loop we have l length so there in the loop we get n into l number of turns so the current i of the solenoid which is flowing across the loop a b c d is actually the actually becomes n l times right the so the total current that is flowing through the loop a b c d is actually equal to the uh, term n l i so the current flowing across the loop a b c d is equal to n l i let me explain this more suppose the solenoid that we have considered has i current flowing across it means the solenoid hai usme se i current flow ho raha hai and the section that we have considered is of l length suppose this is the section that we have considered of l length right and this section contains this much number of turns suppose n number of turns this section contains n number of turns and each turn has current i flowing through it so the total current flowing through this section is n l i okay means n is the number of turns for a unit length l is the actual length so the number of turns that are present in this length will be n l now each turn has current i flowing through it so the total current flowing through the length l is n l i All right. क्या क्या पॉइंट्स हैं हमारे पास सोलनॉइड में जो करंट फ्लो हो रहा है दैट इज आई दैट मीन्स थ्रू एवरी टर्न करेंट आई इज फ्लोइंग नाउ वी हैव कंसिडर्ड अ सेक्शन ऑफ लेंथ एल एंड वी नो दैट द नंबर ऑफ टर्न पर यूनिट लेंथ इज अ स्मॉल एन सो द सेक्शन दैट वी हैव कंसिडर्ड इट कंटेन्स एन एल नंबर ऑफ टर्न बिकॉज एन इज द नंबर ऑफ टर्न पर यूनिट लेंथ and we multiply it by the length l then we get the total number of turns present in that length l that is n l so the current flowing across the loop through a, through the section across the across that loop that we have considered yeah across the section that we have considered is n l i then by using ampere circuit law we get the line or the closed integral b dot dl is equal to mu not times of the total current total current through the loop a b c d so we have calculated this as bl and mu not and this total current is equal to n l i so we can solve it to get the magnetic field b is equal to mu not 
n i where n is the number of turns per unit length of the solenoid this is the point that we have to note ki n jo hai wo number of turns per unit length of the solenoid hai because most of the times in while solving numericals we didn't rem we can't remember this and we put wrong value here n is not the total number of turns n is the number of turns per unit length of that solenoid all right now uh, so this is the value of the magnetic field at somewhere in the middle of the solenoid we also note we can note that the magnetic field at the ends of the solenoid is actually half of that present in its middle so we just have to note this out ki jo aapka magnetic field hai at the at points of the solenoids is actually equal to the half of the magnetic field that is in the middle section of the solenoid all right so at end points b is equal to hota hai half mu not ni and we can also show it graphically like this if you want to show this variation in a graph then we have to plot distance on x axis and magnetic field which is dependent on the distance on y axis right now this is the end points of the solenoid suppose i am saying this is the end points of the solenoid okay so at the middle we have the maximum value and at end points this value becomes half of its value that exists in the middle of the solenoid so suppose this is mu not ni means the value at the center and it vary like this this point it becomes b by 2 or half of the magnetic field and it vary like this okay so at the end points magnetic field becomes half of its value that exists at its center this is the center of the solenoid and these are the end points of the solenoid this is how we can show the variation of magnetic field along the axis of the solenoid all right so this was all about the solenoid uh, here we have studied about the straight solenoid all the time next thing that we will study is toroidal solenoid it is a bit different from the straight one so in the next video we will be studying magnetic field due to a toroidal solenoid till then stay tuned and study hard thank you